We are ready to proceed to the next part of the morning session. Practical announcement. Everybody received a badge yesterday, had to hand it back, some of them. Some of you haven't done that, which means that now the workshop um, registration are not correct. So those of you who haven't handed back their badge yesterday and are still walking around with yesterday's badge will have to uh, set that straight and get today's badge, otherwise you'd be in the wrong workshop. We don't want some workshops to be overflowing and others having insufficient participants. The next speaker is someone who's also made this switch, as I explained earlier on, Roland Gertz. He spent 15 years in uh, fire fighting, 10 years in Erfug, and five years in Karlsruhe. He's a uh, chief of fire officer, and uh, he made the switch to the University of Wuppertal. Firefighting is a specialization. Ladies and gentlemen, hello, Minsk. Um, I, <laughs> <laughs> I want to... <laughs> I want to start and uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, chemistry. I hope uh, you like chemistry uh, because I'm a chemist and I want to uh, give you some uh, messages about chemistry of fire smoke. But uh, let's start with an example um, about uh, my, my shot. Uh, you, have, uh, you have done this uh, and um, I want to give you an evidence that I'm really a firefighter because after that lecture you... Uh, uh, you are thinking, oh, it's only a chemist, but uh, I'm a firefighter too. Let's start uh, with an example, uh, a fire in that uh, sorting plant of building site waste. We, um, there is a, a big amount of uh, more than 12,000 tons of um, plastic waste. Um, this one here is the plastic waste, and uh, on a sunny Sunday afternoon, it, uh, it's ignited, <clears throat> and um, here you can see there are scrap tires too, and uh, 12,000 tons of plastic waste. Uh, here uh, much more uh, in detail a picture. You can see it's a very uh, a catastrophic mixture of uh, polymers, and uh, this was the first uh, picture on scene. <clears throat> okay. And if we have a look uh, on, on this example, we can discuss how to, uh, what is to do, what is the right operation here. And um, in my opinion, it's uh, necessary at first to think about, oh, let it burn, or on the other hand, extinguish it. Um, both operations uh, have... Uh, 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 for example, if you, if you extinguish it and you begin to extinguish it, uh, the smoke uh, comes down and you uh, don't see anything in the surrounding of that fire. Uh, and um, I see that uh, it, it's my brain in that situation. <laughs> Have a look in my brain and uh, in, the, uh, in order to the German Fire Service Regulation 100, uh, the... Um, the chief commander has to establish the situation, <coughs> make the re reconnaissance, and then, uh, and then we have to do the hazard assessment on scene, and uh, the commander, the incident commander, has to decide what to do. And um, in this case, I think, oh, um, <coughs> after establishing the situation, after the reconnaissance, <coughs> Um, I have a look on, on, on that incident, uh, what is uh, the type and source of damage, what uh, damage objects and, and the vicinity, the size of uh, damage. Um, and here in that case, I think there are uh, lots of hazards uh, for the environment because uh, that smoke uh, isn't very good in, in the air and for the environment and the um, fire extinguishing media uh, is a problem in that case too. And uh, it was a, uh, a Sunday evening and uh, the weather was fine and I think, oh, it's uh, such a great amount of plastic waste. Uh, I want to have a look uh, from the air and I need a helicopter uh, because I'm 
flying uh, helicopters. I, I love it. And <laughs> I think it's, <laughs> it's the right uh, case to do that. And uh, it was very interesting. Um, I have a look uh, from the air to the bottom and uh, I see oh, the, the whole amount is burning. Uh, it, uh, it's not possible to, to break uh, the fire down here. And um, I think we have to extinguish uh, this fire for one or two weeks. And um, here you can see a short video from the helicopter. That was uh, the view from the helicopter, and you see the whole amount is burning, and a lot of smoke is evaporated by that fire, and uh, we get a lot of emergency calls, uh, something like three in a distance from three kilometers from that fire, uh, and uh, the population say, oh, it smells and it's burning, uh, a lot of fear in, in that uh, case. Okay, um, the next step in the German Regulation 100 is uh, the, um, the hazard assessment. We have to make uh, this uh, assessment, what hazards are recognized for humans, in that case for the environment, uh, which hazards are primarily must be controlled where, and uh, what, uh, what, which possibilities for hazard control exist in that case, with uh, what advantages and disadvantages. We talked about that. One possibility is let it burn, and the other possibility is um, to um, extinguish the fire. And um, both uh, possibilities uh, have advantages and disadvantages. And uh, with a view of that uh, cloud of fire smoke, uh, I think oh, it's not good to uh, let it burn, and then we begin to extinguish. But in uh, this case, is, um, in my opinion, it was uh, a fight against uh, the emotions of the uh, population. Uh, the people say, after, after one day, <coughs> um, it's, uh, uh, it smells uh, like smoke and, it's, it's, uh, and, and they ha have a lot of fear. And uh, the newspaper headlines the fire service uh, don't know what to do in that case. <clears throat> Every people know it's very toxic. And, uh, and then we, we fight against the emotions of the population. And at first, in the daylight, we put a thick foam layer on that burning area, not to extinguish the fire, but you can't extinguish the fire by that way, but uh, only to suppress the evaporation of fire smoke in the daylight. And the population say, oh, it's good, fire service is okay. Um, and then, <coughs> in the dark night, <laughs> we pull the cluster uh, apart and uh, we extinguish the fire. Uh, portion by portion, and it, it, uh, it evaporates uh, smoke, but the population uh, is sleeping, and it's no problem. <clears throat> I think in that case it was something like a psychological operation uh, with a fire service. Okay, but in, in, uh, <clears throat> in, this, um, in this case it was um, useful to know something about uh, the chemistry in fire smoke, you think, uh, and, and I hope you love chemistry because yet now it, uh, it's a little bit uh, of the chemistry of uh, smoke. At first, <clears throat> here you can uh, see a picture from uh, one incident in, uh, in, in Erfurt. I was the incident commander and have a look on that small uh, and that little flames on the roof. Uh, fire smoke is a mixture of uh, combustible gases and vapors, and here you can see that uh, in a very nice uh, case of, of a fire. And uh, this is uh, another case, uh, burning scrap tire behind the uh, building, and uh, now let's uh, talk about uh, at first the emotions of the population. We talk about that. Uh, these are headlines uh, from the past, for example, <coughs> uh, a galvanizing plant uh, uh, is blasting, <clears throat> uh, 
and uh, the headline is no poison evaporated. Oh no, that's not the truth. It can't be true because uh, there, there are a lot of uh, toxic substances without a fire and, and uh, then there must be toxic substances in the smoke uh, in, a f in, in, in case of a fire. And uh, a funny headline is, uh, with the ash from the fire, uh, dioxins are raining on the roofs. Dioxins, polychlorinated uh, dioxins are raining on the roof in a big amount. It's not true. But uh, 900 people were evacuated. <laughs> and here uh, the, the police says, oh, no, I, we think uh, there's no Seveso poison. And um, this is... Uh, uh, the children um, have holidays if it's burning, school and kindergarten closed. Um, <clears throat> and the next, uh, the habitants escape out of the city because uh, they have a lot of fear about the uh, fire smoke. Now, let's have a look in, uh, in a scientific way in, in that uh, fire smoke cloud. And um, at first, I, I have to show you uh, division between inorganic and organic compounds in fire smoke. We have a look at the left side of this cloud. At first we have uh, the inorganic compounds of fire smoke. There are only 11 up to 13 uh, inorganic fire gases in the smoke and it, it depends directly on the elements uh, in, in the fuel. <clears throat> we will talk about that. That's the one side, and the left side of this cloud picture, um, the, the acute toxicity only depends on that gases, the acute toxicity. And when we have a look on the right side of the cloud, <clears throat> we have uh, on, on the right side, that are the components in the fire smoke, the organic components, the carbon-containing molecules, the organic <laughs> components from the smoke. And these are the components <clears throat> with a long-term effect. This is the left side, is the acute effect, the acute toxicity, and the right part is the long-term effect with the organic compounds. And now let's have a look in more detail. The inorganic fire gases, <clears throat> um, smoke in higher concentration uh, cause death. It's, uh, you know that this was a case with uh, three young children uh, as fatalities in, in that uh, dwelling. And now have a look in the uh, simple chemistry. You only can find the chemical elements uh, in the smoke. Uh, which is the, full, uh, the fuel containing. If you are, uh, there are um, carbon containing fuels uh, <laughs> burning, you get CO and CO2, we hear it. Um, and <clears throat> this is the inorganic uh, part of the problem. And uh, the carbon containing fuel produce uh, that organic compound too, because organic molecules are carbon containing molecules. Uh, you know, you know that, and when we can uh, hurry up on, on this uh, slide. Now, <clears throat> think about. Uh, let's talk about uh, the nitrogen-containing fuels. Um, you know some nitrogen fuels, nitrogen-containing fuels. For example, polyurethane. Maybe, uh, for example, uh, the mattresses uh, with uh, polyurethane foam is a nitrogen containing fuel but it's not uh, it's not uh, the 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 main source of uh, nitrogen uh, containing components in in the smoke there are a lot of natural sources uh, of nitrogen containing fuel for example um, your, your pillow i think is filled with uh, feathers downs and so on, and uh, the feathers are from proteins, and proteins are nitrogen-containing fuel. Uh, my my uh, suit is uh, nitrogen-containing fuel because it's from uh, wool. Wool feathers 
chicken in the hole are nitrogen uh, containing <laughs> fuel. <clears throat> I think it's important to it's important to say this on <laughs> this place because if you have a, a great area with chicken and a building with a lot of chicken and it's burning, you get a lot of uh, HCN and NOx. You have seen this in a case, <clears throat> very thick brown smoke comes out a burning chicken farm. <clears throat> okay, nitrogen containing fuel <laughs> produces at first uh, hydrogen cyanide, the HCN, and it's very toxic, you know, it's very acute toxic. The NOx <clears throat> and um, the ammonia is produced too, uh, too but uh, it's a question of the uh, circumstances. Okay, the next one, chlorinated uh, fuels uh, like PVC uh, produce uh, in the most of the time uh, HCl, the hydrochloric acid, and uh, the firefighters know them because of the irritants. Uh, it, it's irritant uh, against the skin, and the skin is, is red after that. You know that <clears throat> sometimes phosgene is, uh, is formed uh, by the fire and uh, elementary chlorine. Okay, uh, sulfuric um, fuel produce uh, SO2 and H2S, you will smell. This is also, uh, if, uh, if the chicken farm is burning, you have a lot of uh, sulfuric uh, fuel. And uh, for example, uh, the tires you need uh, for the vulcanization of uh, tires, you need sulfur and uh, a special hard rubber um, contains more than 50% sulfur. And then if you have uh, a big amount of tires, you have uh, that uh, inorganic compounds in the air and the fire is evaporate uh, that. Um, a very special is the phosphorus in, in that uh, uh, slide because it's only in, uh, in pesticides uh, normally. Uh, organic uh, phosphorus compounds, when they are burning, they produce uh, the pH 3. It's very toxic. Um, here you can see the toxic twins, CO and HCN, uh, the, the main toxic components in... Um, uh, <coughs> the main toxic components in normal fires and uh, the others, um, I think you know. And, and now, in the last years, we have a problem too with a, with a new element, with a new chemical element in, in the fuel, in the <coughs> and it's uh, fluorine. Fluorine, uh, for example, the cooling agent in the... Um, uh, the cooling agent in the air conditioner from the cars, uh, the new cooling agent is, uh, is combustible and is uh, fluorine containing and it produces a lot of COF2 and COF2 is hydrolyzed to HF in the air uh, by the water. And now let's uh, have a look uh, in, in a small in, insertion um, about lithium ion batteries because uh, in the future, I think we have a lot of problems with the lithium-ion batteries and uh, the smoke uh, evaporated from uh, burning or uh, the thermal runaway of that batteries. If a, a lithium-ion battery is stressed by thermal, mechanical and uh, electrical uh, stress, <clears throat> it can cause the so-called thermal runaway and the thermal runaway makes <clears throat> chemical hazards for the firefighters too. Let's have a look on, on that problem. The normal um, batteries used in uh, electric vehicles <clears throat> only um, make the hazard level up to four. The no I can show you it uh, in, in a short video clip. Uh, the venting uh, the venting of the, uh, the battery is, uh, is the highest level in um, electric vehicles uh, from, and, and the batteries used there. Um, we will find the, the higher levels in other battery usage and not in the electric vehicles normally. 
Now let's have a look. Um, a, a small lithium ion battery, a small cell is, is no problem, but um, <laughs> in, in the uh, electrical storage, the energy storage, uh, we use uh, modules where uh, 100 uh, cells are assembled to one module. And um, have a look on, on that uh, short video, but it's a little bit confidential, you know. <laughs> And uh, we, we, I'm sorry, we can't show this in the video stream. Here you can uh, see the venting of uh, such a lithium ion battery from an electric vehicle. And <coughs> in, this, uh, in this smoke, <coughs> the white smoke, uh, for example, HF is in a high concentration. The next video is a little <laughs> bit confidential too. <laughs> and here you can see uh, the initiation of the thermal runaway by electrical overcharging uh, the lithium ion battery. And our mass spectrometer <laughs> breaks down. <laughs> it's a very high pressure. But you see that smoke was a little bit more uh, darker and, and um, you can see there are chemical reactions in the battery. Okay, you, you like chemistry, I hope. <coughs> <And> <laughs> but <coughs> have, a look, uh, have a look on this side. This is the only important part of that slide. Um, in the lithium ion battery, there is uh, LEPF6 as uh, electrolyte salt. In, in all batteries, it's the same, mostly. The, most of the lithium-ion batteries use uh, that LEPF6, and uh, therefore, as, as the electrolyte, the, the batteries are different in the cathodic material and, and the anodic material, but uh, the same is uh, the LEPF6 uh, as electrolyte. And if uh, LEPF6 um, for example, you have a, a mechanical damage of the lithium ion battery and the electrolyte um, uh, goes out of the uh, battery. <clears throat> you have uh, this LEPF6 on the floor. It produces um, HF. You have to know this. If uh, the thermal runaway starts or the battery is in fire, you get HF and it's a very toxic inorganic gas. And that's important, uh, the next little bit confidential video. <clears throat> I want to show you uh, this uh, short video to have a look that carbon dioxide is not the right fire extinguishing agent. Um, you can't influence the um, behavior of that module with carbon dioxide. Here you can see a lot of cells are combined to one module and uh, it's uh, the thermal runaway starts uh, initiated by um, electrical overcharging. And if a, if a thermal runaway happens, the surface of the cell uh, gets a temperature uh, higher than 800 centigrade degrees. 800 degrees and uh, the cells uh, near that cell starts the thermal runaway above 130 degrees. And that's one of the problems. The thermal runaway produces temperatures more than 800 degrees. And here you can see CO2 on the fire, it's out. <laughs> the CO2 side and it's burning. Um, if an, a lithium ion battery gets a temperature more than 130 degrees, the thermal runaway can start. And in that thermal runaway we have temperatures on the surface of the cell more than 800 degrees and therefore we have uh, something like a domino effect in, in that case. And you see carbon dioxide is not the right uh, extinguishing agent. Um, normally you 
need water, lots of water. To cool that. <clears throat> Without water, you can't interrupt the spread of the thermal runaway in a module. You see it, I think. <laughs> okay, <clears throat> and now a, a very serious uh, case. Um, I think um, I, for, for in, in the last year, there was a very serious case in, uh, in Germany, North, North Rhine-Westphalia, and um, 32 tons of that cylindrical cells uh, gave a mass explosion of lithium-ion batteries. I can show you. You can find this uh, video on YouTube. It was the fire department in Hilden, Germany, North Rhine-Westphalia. And we can start this video. It's not confidential. <laughs> <laughs> On that time, in, in this incident, um, um, the incident commander thinks, oh, uh, the fire is under control. We have no problem. Um, but uh, he don't know something about that lithium-ion batteries that there are storage in that night. Only in that night there are 32 tons of lithium-ion batteries. Here you can see it, and in this video, um, the noise is very important for you, that you can hear the small explosions of the lithium-ion batteries. If you hear something like that, go back from the scene and um, it's, very, it's a very dangerous situation, but I, you can see this. One of the problems was that uh, the lithium-ion batteries are not wrapped in that case. They are only uh, to go to a plant for um, recycling. And uh, 32 tons <coughs> of that lithium-ion batteries, um, they have contact together all, and, and one battery makes the thermal runaway, the next battery starts to end the fire from the outside, and then it's a mass explosion of lithium-ion batteries. Here you can see this. You hear the... You can see the equipment from the fire service, and uh, I think uh, you can imagine uh, the disaster on scene if you uh, see the helmet of the very injured uh, incident commander. Uh, horrible burns on, on the head, and uh, he stayed in the hospital for a year. And, uh, but he, he uh, has arrived in, in that uh, serious situation. <clears throat> we, we think about, uh, Ricardo and me, we talk about uh, what is uh, the rule of the HF in, in, that, um, uh, um, uh, in that case, <clears throat> but uh, I don't know uh, more details about the incident commander. Okay, let's go back uh, after that small insertion about um, lithium-ion batteries, uh, go back to, uh, to our main topic, uh, the inorganic components of smoke. Normally, the fire department, the fire service, has a lot of uh, measurement and detectors um, to measure the concentration of the inorganic compounds. I think uh, um, <coughs> it's no problem to do that. And um, after the, the first uh, important message that uh, the evaporated gases depend directly on the chemical elements uh, containing uh, in the fuel, the next <clears throat> and the acute toxicity of smoke depends on that inorganic compounds. Uh, the next important message is um, use the measurement to uh, make the hazard assessment and uh, use uh, inhalation protection. Normally you have to use the breathing apparatus. 
And in, in case of uh, fire with an electric vehicle, um, you need a much more distance and uh, use uh, the, the nozzle with a high pressure to uh, get more distance uh, from the smoke. Okay, that's the first part. <clears throat> the inorganic components, uh, the acute toxicity depend on the inorganic components. And now we are um, have a look on the organic components, the aromatic hydrocarbons especially, and the suit and uh, a tiny amount of polychlorinated dibenzodioxines <coughs> and furanes. Here you can see a bathroom um, after a small fire and uh, on that walls you can see all the aromatic uh, components of the smoke. <coughs> In that small video you can see a dry distillation of wood. Wood is uh, thermal decomposed and um, we can start the video, please. <laughs> and um, this is uh, the normal way in, in, a, in a room fire uh, producing uh, fire smoke. And this organic components on the right side, the are combustible. You can see this in this experiment. <clears throat> now you can see this. <laughs> okay, have a look in detail. <clears throat> um, the point of origin uh, of uh, the smoke is the fuel, the thermal decomposed fuel, and and the flame. We have a uh, we have a react uh, heat cracking in the fuel. And uh, by that heat cracking, uh, evaporate a lot of small molecules and radicals, um, and uh, they combine to the aromatic hydrocarbons I will show you. And uh, if the flame uh, breaks down, the smoke comes out of the reaction zone. Smoke is something uh, that um, may be a flame, but there was not enough oxygen to make this flame. Smoke is the, is, uh, the reaction zone coming out of the uh, fuel. Okay, much more in detail. <clears throat> the radicals, uh, in, in every flame reaction zone, um, there is acetylene uh, formed and acetylene with the uh, radicals combined to aromatic hydrocarbons. And therefore, the next message is every carbon containing um, fuel produces carcinogenic uh, aromatic hydrocarbons and um, PAH, the polyaromatic, polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons, and they are all cancerogenic. It's known uh, since uh, decades of years. It's, uh, it's normal in, in every fire. And <clears throat> uh, this is uh, uh, something, uh, something like uh, um, polymerization <clears throat> from the small molecules to the bigger molecules to the much more bigger <laughs> molecules and the soot. The soot is something like a mega PAH. <coughs> and uh, therefore, um, it, it, uh, it goes out of the reaction zone and therefore you will find all that components, all that carcinogenic components on the surface of the suit. And we can, I can show you here an electron microscope picture of suit. Here you can see the small balls. These are the, uh, this is the normal structure of suit. <coughs> Uh, you like chemistry, I hope. Yeah. <laughs> um, <clears throat> we, ca we can uh, <laughs> explain the, the formation of aromatic uh, hydrocarbons in detail. You see, uh, beginning with the acetylene, uh, the first ring is uh, closed, and then we have uh, phenylacetylene in a flame. You can measure it in, in every um, 
uh, burning material and then the uh, bigger uh, molecules. <clears throat> okay, but um, now I have a, a look more closer to the fire service. <clears throat> In uh, that case, we have uh, uh, chromatogram of uh, the smoke components in the air and we will find in the air the more volatile aromatic hydrocarbons up to naphthalene. <clears throat> Benzene, toluene, styrene, up to naphthalene. You will find that components in high concentration of that carcinogenic components in the air over a duration uh, of two hours after the fire is extinguished. Two hours after the fire is extinguished, the walls are very hot and from the soot layer on the walls, uh, this uh, carcinogenic compounds evaporate in the air. And in that duration of two hours after the fire is extinguished, you have the highest concentration of carcinogenic compounds in the surrounding air in a room fire. In the suit, all the time after fire is extinguished, and if it's cold, it's no problem, but on the suit surface, <clears throat> you have uh, the whole collection of uh, non-volatile carcinogenic substances, uh, especially the PAH and the higher aromatic hydrocarbons. And therefore, <clears throat> what is the message for the fire service? Um, for duration of two hours, uh, you, there, there are very high concentrations of volatile carcinogenic substances um, in the air, and therefore you have to use in that time the breathing apparatus. And if you have black and white area division in the station, and if you wash your hands on scene, and if you wash your skin and put the suit uh, from the skin, clean the skin, then you have no problem with that substances. It's very important. Use inhalation protection, wash your hands, wash your shoes, <laughs> wash the clothes after firefighting. In, 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 in my uh, fire service in Karlsruhe, we have very big and very expensive um, washing machines, professional washing machines. And if the firefighter come, uh, come back from the scene, they put uh, their uh, clothes uh, off and put it in the washing machine and uh, in that case, you have no problem with the substances. But be, in, in that case, careful if you don't have uh, that equipment. Okay. <clears throat> I think... Volgens um, mij is het niet nodig om... Aromatic hydrocarbons, only the, um, the yield of the aromatic hydrocarbons um, depends on the fuel. For example, uh, if uh, polystyrene is burning, you have uh, the same uh, yield of aromatic hydrocarbons like um, in, in the case of uh, burning sugar. Don't think about natural <coughs> fuels are not the problem. It's the same in, in that case. <clears throat> okay. Uh, the last, uh, the last uh, one, uh, only a few words to, uh, to uh, the uh, formation of um, the polychlorinated dibenzodiazines. You need low temperature. You can see this uh, with a lot of soot. Um, big amounts of chlorinated fuel and without copper, you don't get relevant yields of uh, the dioxines. Without copper, it's, uh, the, the synthesis is impossible in the fire. And we have a, a very clear um, border. Below 800 Kelvin, <coughs> you get uh, large molecules. Above 800 Kelvin, 
the molecules get more and more smaller and more oxidized molecules. And um, it's the same uh, in, in case of the dioxins. Okay, <clears throat> the summary um, we talked about, it's um, the inorganic gases um, make the acute toxicity and the organic compounds make the long-term effects of smoke. And um, the other, for example, dioxins are not uh, uh, very important for the hazard assessment because uh, this is uh, toxic enough, I think, and the carcinogenic um, compounds <clears throat> are in a very high concentration uh, on every uh, fire scene. Okay, then <clears throat> I stay safe and healthy in the future. Thank you for your attention. Thank you well. Thank you well. Thank you. Thank you. Well, thank you well. Thank you. Um, weinig tijd over for Not much time for questions, but we do need to ask questions because the professor will be leaving us. In an hour. Als je nog snel een vraag tussen wil of kan. If you want to insert a question, now's your chance. Yes. Um, I think that's the same uh, material like the liquid. Yes. But what kind of hazard is that um, by fire in, in a home regarding to the presentation of uh, fire wafer with uh, different, different kinds of gases mm -hmm. that are in the vapor and that? Yes. It's, it's the same chemistry. <clears throat> and we have done. Uh, uh, a small a little project with a German association of uh, photovoltaic companies. Uh, they uh, built that uh, um, electrical energy storage for every house with a, a PV uh, device on the roof. And um, you can find this uh, in the internet, but only in a German version. Um, we have uh, the, the, the chemical hazards are the same. You have uh, HF in that case. You need a lot of water. And I, it's, it's uh, necessary to think about where uh, do you um, put this, uh, this battery module in the house, uh, under the roof or below. And it's, uh, in my opinion, it's very um, <coughs> important to put uh, the uh, decomposition products directly out of the house. Uh, in 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 the in uh, other case, it's uh, very corrosive. Okay, okay. I think that we have to leave it. I think we should leave it at that. I believe that the message from the professor was loud and clear concerning uh, lithium ions and occupational safety. Not everybody uh, delights in crude chemistry, but we're always happy to know such people, and we should cherish people who understand chemistry. Thank you very, very much. <laughs>